And here we go, everybody. We've got the overlay. We've got the heroes set up. Let me introduce the players to you once more. On the red team, we see Pukan. Oh, excuse me, Flying Bear on the Diablo. QD on the Nova. SCE on the Murky. Lemon playing the Tyrande and Barveshnik, the Green Jesus, the Thrall. And on the blue side, we have Pukan on the Murden, Max on the Rainer, Spartacus rocking the Keltas, Flamey, 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 and Manchester. Going for the Malfurion, and last but not least, we have Cookies on the Birdman, on the Falstad. So, we're going to take a look at the talents here. At level 1, I don't think there's anything out of the ordinary. We see a reverberation on the Murden. Very good, you know, to slow down attack speed from heroes such as Tyrande, Thrall, and Nova. And even on warriors such as Diablo, it's actually quite useful. Um, on, the, on the Malfurion, Harmony. Okay, so we see... We're probably going to see a full regrowth build here. Also very, very nice. And I think it's going to be much needed to sort of help allies in trouble with those powerful healing over time. So the red team, of course, they have the early game. They want Diablo and Tyrande to roam around the map and maybe Nova with a follow-up here with the snipes and uh, the basic attacks to finish the target off. So far, it doesn't really work. Spartacus taking a lot of damage here, though, but so is Cutie on the Nova. you got to be really careful, especially after acquiring level 4. And you don't want to lose all those gathering power stacks, you know. You definitely don't want to do that. Now, Cookies in Manchester, they're in a little bit of trouble. Flying Bear rushing in like a crazy man. Not really connecting, though. Perveshnik can't really use his Pharaoh Spirit to follow up. Uh, Luna Flare, stunning Cookies. But, of course, his buddy Mafrin is taking good care of him. Good job here from Manchester, you know. Replenishing his mana and his health alike. Of course, Innervate is a really, really good trade, allowing people to get sustained or still stay sustained in the course of battle. Now, Diablo actually, from the Hunter, becomes the Hunted. A lot of damage with the Living Bomb, but it's not going to be enough. Pukin also trying to sort of chase him down uh, with a Dwarf Toss, but of course, Diablo not having... Yep, being one of the tankiest heroes in the game, especially if he stacks all those Soul Stones to get more health and bigger health regeneration. Really hard to take down. Now... Now things are going to get very interesting. The first shrine has been activated, but also Pukin charging in, getting stunned though, Bavashnik being locked in between the Birdman and the little dwarf. Double dwarf action, actually. Really, really well executed, and that was first blood for the blue team. Now, let's see. The shrine has been activated, and Diablo already on it, but so is Max on Rainer, and so is Cookies on the false set. Now, both teams are going to rush there. Thrall coming back from the uh, Hall of the Storms right now. He's, of course, going to try to Rush to the aid of his team as quickly as humanly possible. Cookie's doing a lot of damage on Flying Bear, and Spartacus could actually follow up with the Gravity Lapse, and here it is! Nice Flame Strike, and I think that might be it! The Lord of Terror falls, and actually the blue team with the second kill of the game. Now Murky actually joined the fray, he's not split soaking and split pushing any longer. He knows that his team needs him, and nice done! And catch him with the Murloc! Yeah, good kill! Really, really well done. The red team with a payback here, 2-1, to one, and both teams trying to collect those Guardians. You know, you want to kill those Skeletal Defenders as quickly as possible. Now Cookie's in a little bit of trouble. We know how deadly Murky can be. We just saw that, actually. The bubble saves him from the Gravity Laps. Now Cutie under a lot of pressure, and the Nova player falls, unfortunately. 25 against 19. If you take a look at the Skeletal Defender counter on the bottom right of your screen, 30 now. So the red team is getting very, very close to unlocking the first Punisher of the game. It's gonna be a Mortar Punisher, by the way. Nice lockdown here. Ah, oh, the Lula Flare a little bit too late here from Lemon, but Flying Bear, is he gonna get away? I think he actually has to pay with his dear life, but you know what, guys? I think this is absolutely worth it. They managed to secure themselves the Punisher, stunning and locking down Cutie here, dealing a lot of damage on Pukan as well. Um, the first Punisher, though, usually not the most deadly one, so you should never really commit too, too much on this first push. Instead, you should be doing what uh, Burveshnik is doing. Run to a different lane, maybe even get mercenaries in the meantime, especially during the later stages of the game. But they're trying to split soak, or actually soak on every single lane while the Punisher is keeping the blue team busy. And, you know, they got the first two towers. They're now hammering on the first forward. Murky also doing a lot of work, followed by Cutie on the Nova. They're actually behind enemy lines right now. And SCE, he knows no, uh, no retreat. He knows no fear. Falling right now, you know, poor little Murloc, but he definitely did a lot, a lot of work. Buying enough time for the Murloc to damage the fort even more. And you can actually see in the overall XP counter that the red team caught up significantly here. 
So although they got sort of uh, crushed in the early game a little bit, oh, nice damage here from QD, but not enough. Um, they still managed to actually pull a hand. So Kong, or actually kudos to Baveshnik for uh, being very uh, aware of the situation and soaking a lot of stuff here. I think Lemon and Flying Bear, these two people, they have to... Um, Oh, what is Lemon doing here? Is he having a disconnect here? That almost looked like uh, he had to go AFK or rush to the toilet or whatever. But uh, good pick up here for the blue team nevertheless, you know. In a game where everything is online, where you honor stands available, you have to take every kill you can get. So, can't really blame him for that. But as I said, uh, Flying Bear and Lemon, they have to work on their combos a little bit more. I think if Diablo and Tyrande work... Uh, you know, better together. I think they can secure themselves a lot of kills now. Max, of course, shooting those uh, huge Diablo, but uh, not really getting a kill here. Uh, we missed a kill on Murky, but of course that's going to happen a lot more frequently, so I'm thinking that uh, it's not really the worst thing if we, in the world if we miss one of those kills. Spartacus in a little bit of trouble. Nova engaging, but Burveshnik a little bit too reckless here. They can't finish off the Sun King, the Kalthas, so it actually Backfired for them a little bit. Thrall actually was the one who bit the dust and not Kalthas. Now also Max chasing down his fellow Terran. And I'm not sure if we can actually pause the game here. Probably not. Nope. I think the players should actually be trying that themselves. Lemon is back in the game, however, though. Just a short, uh, probably change the quality settings or whatever in his game. And that also causes you to disconnect for a couple of seconds. So everything's good. No team actually uh, has a numbers disadvantage right now. Both teams trying to rally themselves. Oh. Looks like we paused the game nevertheless. Yeah, which is actually a very nice move here to see that uh, uh, really good man is trying to buy Lemon enough time to uh, come back to the game. And as we said, it, I think Lemon still might be experiencing some, uh, you know, connection issues. He actually ran inside the enemy team. Of course, that's never what you should do as a Tyrande. Cutie trying to juke the Muradin, but Pukan is having none of it. The Stormbolt missed. But the Thunderclap did not, and so the blue team here now with a decisive advantage, without their single support, the red team cannot really keep up the fight here. So what they should be doing now is they should go back to lap to lanes, top and bottom respectively, and soak as much experience as they can in order to sort of uh, get level 10 as quickly as possible and uh, fight on even terms. So I'm going to try to uh, pause the game a little bit more. Alright, so we're back in the game, boys and girls. The blue team still with a decisive advantage here. 10 against 9, but as I say it, the red team actually evens out the score now. Murden buys the dust. Good snipe here from Cutie, of course, giving him those ever so precious gathering power stacks. That's going to be uh, really strong in the late game. But the blue team, nevertheless, secured themselves the blue Punisher, or the frozen Punisher, actually. And uh, they are hammering at the defenses here. Uh, from the red team. Um, actually, we can see Manchester with a good uh, tip here from... Wait, what is that? We see March of the Murlocs. No Arctograd. I actually didn't realize it because I didn't really pay too much attention to the heroic ability choices here. But the March of the Murlocs is amazing and we see Triple Tap from Nova coming out, hitting the Rainer and bringing him down very, very low. I think he might actually fall to the tiny little Murloc. The Murloc is relentless. He's chasing and I think Rainer is going to fall. Oh, last second save here. From Manchester on the Malfurion. Great action, but now another kill from the red team. Nova, you know, accumulating all those stacks. And I like it quite a bit here. I'm not gonna lie. Super cool stuff. Let's actually take a look here at the Nova player as we speak. Uh, we're gonna take a look at how many stacks she has already accumulated. Three gathering power chargers. That's not too bad. And uh, she's definitely gonna try to uh, do a lot more. Now, back to uh, the vision of everybody. Nice damage here on Pukan, but of course Muradin is a feisty, tanky little dwarf. Now we can see Falstaff flying in. Braveshnik actually anticipated it, but uh, yeah, he's having none of it. Good day actually left the game, but that's just the spectator, so no big deal here. No worries about that. 12 against 11. Both teams very, very close in terms of global XP. Now Malfurion got locked down. The Feral Spirit misses, unfortunately, but still enough damage coming. The Sun Ring and the Lightning Breath is going to take down... And maybe even Rainer, but no, he can still use the Healing Fountain, and that's going to be enough regeneration to keep him alive for now. Now, Falstead, oh, actually exposing himself a little bit there. Nice, Mighty Gust, disengaging and saving his own life there. But, uh, man, that pickoff on Malfurion is exactly how the red team wants to uh, execute their team comp, right? So, good job to them. Although, or even though, the Feral Spirit from Thrall didn't even connect 
still enough to take down that tree hugger. Now let's see, next shrine is going to get activated very, very soon. Uh, this time it's probably going to be uh, an arcane one. I haven't actually seen an arcane punisher in this game at all. And there we go, as we speak, arcane punisher. These are the deadliest, these are the most dangerous, and these are the ones you actually want to unlock to make serious progress on enemy structures. Cookie, cookie actually activating it here. Now they're going to have to stack their AoE abilities and kill as many skeletal defenders at the same time as possible. Hammering coming out, Pukan also trying to buy a little bit of time, also trying to scout where the enemy uh, might be coming from. Nice stun here, not really enough damage to lock down cookies. The healing from Malfurion already coming in here, but Tarande is now the hunted one. And she didn't really have enough sustain to keep herself alive, but also Muradin, a great sun ring separating the team, and there is Cutie on the Nova getting those save kills, but the blue team is not beaten. Tranquility keeping multiple allies alive at the same time and that was great that was actually deciding um Malfurion, you know and this is the 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 situations where he really shines where he really manages to do great things for his team cutie of course trying to buy uh, the red team a little bit more time as well we actually see murky roaming around the minimap there he comes his team really needs him at their side but i think he still decides to go for a little bit of a push here they know that they can't contest this anymore 39 and now 40 defenders for the blue team, Arcane Punisher on the move, so they're trying to just split soak a little bit more, and uh, maybe just even you know keep up the the overall experience here. And they are doing a really good job at that, although they have lost this Punisher as well. Oh, actually, the Murky Egg. Look at that, guys! Arcane Punisher. Oh, he's actually gonna get it. Rainer. There we go. Murky actually should not fall, and he dies at this very moment. Ah, oh, that is a little bit of a bummer here. The Murloc Fish Boy actually had to give it away and uh, say goodbye for now look at that arcane punisher incredible damage coming in here and uh, the blue team they're happy with that they're getting the fort actually triple tap now coming in but not enough to take down Falstad. also look at these powerful healings by the way as i expected uh you know manchester he's going for a full regrowth build of course, that's a lot of good stuff happening. We can actually take a look at this, at these towns. Enduring growth increases the duration by six. Then Life Seed automatically grants one of those increased or improved uh, regrowth spells to a random ally, nearby ally, every now and then. So that's really good. That's actually really good and still underrated, in my opinion. Now, they're actually starting to hunt the Malfurion down. Veveshnik locking him down with the Sun Ring and then following up with the uh, Feral Spirit. And good kill. Clean kill. Clearly executed here. Now Muradin, he's of course a lot more tanky than a Malfurion. Is he actually going to make it though? I think he is for now. Of course you don't really want to commit too many heroics and too many spells on a buff warrior like Muradin here. Crazy fights indeed. This game is super tense, super exciting and I'm actually happy that we managed to balance out the two teams just the way we did because both teams are about to hit level 16 so that means it's still any team's game now murky of course serves as a mobile ward here also cutie giving away his position now he needs to run of course the clone or the hologram dealing a lot of damage and actually soaking up a lot of shit but oh his health is gonna fall i mean that was a great mighty gust pushing away three people at the same time but then of course we had lemon with a golden luna flare Killing, executing Kel'thas here, really nicely done. In the meantime, we see Pukan doing a little bit of a split push here with the mercenary, with the shaman. The fallen shamans, of course, are one of the most deadliest um, camps when it comes to pushing. Nice lockdown. Avatar being pushed here. He needs to save his life, and it looks like Avatar, Avatar, is indeed enough to save him this time. So, but you know, the red team still has to deal with these mercenaries. They got rid of them just right now, and exactly at the right moment to actually fight for the nude shrine here in the top lane this time now it remains to be seen what kind of punisher it's going to be we just had an arcane one and of course another arcane one would be the most welcome site for any team let's see cookies he's in a very dangerous spot here being targeted by nova who did a really good job at staying there unseen and now we see the first lockdown once again here for the red team, killing one of the blue mem uh, team members before the real thing starts. But at the same time, Cutie still being fired on by the Hyperion. It's not going to be enough damage though. Lightning Breath. Return. Pukan doesn't have the Avatar anymore. He just used it a couple of uh, minutes ago. And now we see Cookies and Pukan. Whoa, great disengage once again. And the March of the Murlocs not really doing too much here, unfortunately. But the red team, man, they couldn't be happier. They're also killing the healer now. Manchester falling apart. 
And can they even get the Kel'Thas? Oh my lord. Murky and Nova, man. These two players are best buddies indeed. And this would be a relatively uncontested Punisher for the red team. They're just executing their team comp so well. And let's actually take a look at the talents and the damage numbers while we have time for it. Now, of course, we see Nova at the very top, 35k compared to Reyna's 45k. But here's a major difference, right? Whereas Raynor deals damage over time with consistent basic attacks, Nova unleashes all of her bursts in a couple of seconds. So, uh, you can take a hero down very quickly with a Nova, but not so much with a Raynor. Now let's take a look at the talents. We don't really see anything out of the ordinary. We see a Ranger's Mark. Okay, that's very nice at level 1. Uh, you know, really good to take down heroes more quickly. That's, of course, uh, the thing about Tyrande, right? She has so many good talents in her kit. So many different builds. You can go for a full support build focusing on your Q. You can go for an owl build focus on your Sentinel. And you can even go for an auto attack build, although that one has been fallen off in popularity just a little bit over the last couple of weeks. So Tyrande, one of those heroes that um, never really gets dull, never really feels boring. You always get to experience something cool with her. Same can be said about Tassadar, by the way. These two heroes heroes, in my opinion, the ones with the biggest talent build variety. Now, the red team not really capitalizing on the Immortal. They're letting it down, go down to waste relatively quickly. But uh, in the meantime, they also took mercenary camps. They also split soaked a, lot of a little bit more because they want to get 20 uh, a lot sooner and a lot quicker than the blue team. Now, they're also trying to take away this normal siege mercenary can murder jumping in with Avatar popping it instantly but just a tiny little millisecond too late here now a defensive shadow stock to disengage look at max man he's dealing so much damage nova once again behind enemy lines but is she too far cut off she actually took quite a bit of damage here from the kalthas couldn't really cloak again in time and there is no getting away from this qd is gonna fall all those gathering power stacks have been reset to zero Wow, that was not worth it. Even though they killed Mafrian, losing a stack Nova is not worth it. Look at the mercenary. Uh, look at the mercenaries and the Murlocs, though. Double M trouble. Mercenaries and Murloc usually brings uh, bad news for the base, but false and flying in. Look at the damage, though, coming in from SCE. Crazy sauce. And is he actually going to get him? I don't think so. Do we see a much of the Murlocs to take down the keep? No, he's going to save it for the next team fight. All right was actually still on cooldown so he probably used it before um, that moment here happened and you can really see how well the red team splits themselves right they're trying to take mercenary camps they're trying to split soak of course murky comes in big and when it comes to split soaking and split pushing and the blue team they're a little bit too clumped up I think they shouldn't really waste too much energy with three players to chase down a murky I think one or two players should be enough Oh, now careful cookies, don't run into the pufferfish. The next shrine is going to get activated very, very soon. And look at that red team. They are setting up a trap here. Hiding in the fog and having three heroes who can chain their crowd control abilities together. But Diablo, he's getting a little bit impatient here. Sending in an owl as well to, you know, try to guess the... Oh, that's an arcane one. That's an arcane puncher. Let's see how well that goes. The blue team should not really get impatient and reckless here. They should wait until they themselves hit level 20 before looking for another team fight. But that's, of course, easier said than done. I think Malfoon is going to pop. Wonderful damage. Triple tap Nova. Snipe combo. And, of course, an owl right behind. And that was too much damage for the Treehugger Night Elf to compensate. Once again, the red team is in full uh, full march here. Nice Sundering pickup here by Boveshnik. Everybody is playing crazy right now, out of their minds. And that's exactly what happened. They let themselves get engaged on before they hit level 20. And that, of course, is not really the position where you want to be in as a team here when you're playing in a 5v5 custom game, guys. All right, let's take a look at the level 20 talents here on both teams. At the Storm tier talent, we see Nexus Frenzy coming in here for the Reina. We see Hardened Shield for Muradin, and then, of course, Bold of the Storm on Kel'thas to give himself a little bit more survivability, you know. Malfurion still hasn't decided. I'm probably... Uh, he's probably going to take the Storm Shield, though, for more AoE protection. But we could also see a Bold of the Storm on him, just in case he wants to get himself to safety from future assaults here. Now, Murky's still hammering in there. The damage numbers have actually climbed a little bit here. Nova still being first place for the red team, and Raynor, of course, doing a lot of damage for the blue team. 20 against 21. Here comes the Punisher, though. Here comes the Arcane Punisher. It's going to be very hard for the blue team to hold this off. Let's see if it's actually going to happen. Jumping right in there, stunning the Rainer, and he has to get to safety 
ASAP. Now, Diablo, he knows no fear. Going in, Spartacus being focused on. The Arcane Barrier, not enough to protect him. And there we go, Lightning Breath. GG, no re, Mr. Sun King. Not this time. I love Sun the Murder, and that's actually not too bad. You know, the Warriors usually want to soak up these uh, stuns and damage hits from the Punisher. But, Punisher, what are you doing? He's not really taking care of the rest of his team, but that's okay because the red team just got another kill. This time on the Jimmy. <laughs> hey, man. And, uh, oh, another stun pickoff. And this is exactly why we see so many crowd control heavy heroes in the current meta. Stun, stun, stun. All I do is stun. And uh, this actually was the recipe for the red team to win the game. The Mighty Gus can actually buy a couple of seconds here, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Nova and Murky doing also a lot of work here. Very hard to take, track down and track down. So GG, guys. That was a good game. The red team played very, very well. But also, man, kudos to the blue team who really fought valiantly here. And uh, it was a 20-minute game, so by no means can you say that any team stomped or steamrolled over the other one. Hope you enjoyed this, guys. And if you want to see more Cassid games here from the Swish family, from the viewers, then please let me know in the comment section down below. And if you want to join me here live at Twitch TV, make sure to join or follow Twitch.tv slash Kendrick Swish. And I'll see you in the next one.